Hey everybody, Jason here at the GDT Basics video question line. Today's topic is features of size and flatness. Today's question submitted was, in my understanding, when straightness or flatness tolerance is associated with a feature of size, the rule number one is overridden and perfect form at MMC is no longer required. So straightness or flatness tolerance associated with the feature of size can be greater than the size tolerance. However, in ASME Y14.5-2009, the standard says that with flatness of a surface where the considered surface is associated with the size dimension, the flatness tolerance must be less than the size tolerance. So why must the flatness tolerance be less than the size tolerance? Well, in order to answer this, let's dig into a couple drawings and compare them side by side and take a look at what the standard tells us. So here we have flatness applied to a flat planar surface. We see that flatness is applied to this bottom surface down here, and it's also qualifying datum feature A. So we're making sure this bottom surface can be held between two parallel planes that are spaced apart 5 thou. This surface, however, is also utilized in this size dimension, which creates a feature of size. So let's take a look at how this is going to be interpreted. If we consider this irregular part, we know based on rule number one and this size dimension here that we have to be within an envelope of perfect form at MMC. So if we draw a perfect form envelope whose size is 1.020, we can see that our feature has to fit inside this envelope. We also know that any size dimension and their local measurements, in other words, a two point check, like this one here has to be 0 0.90 or more. We can't be less than the LMC value. So we have to be larger than 0 0.980 on any local size, but we also have to fit inside an envelope of 1.020 for the size dimension. Now separately, we also see that this bottom surface has to be held to a tolerance of 5 thousandths, and that is the flatness tolerance. Now let's consider an alternative method. We see here on this drawing that we've applied flatness directly to the size dimension itself. And for those of you that don't know, this changes the interpretation quite drastically. Now, instead of controlling the flatness of the bottom surface, we are controlling the flatness of the central element since our interpretation shifted to flatness applied to a feature of size. The previous example was flatness applied to a surface. That surface just so happened to be part of a feature of size. However, in this new example, flatness is applied directly to the size dimension and therefore we're controlling the central element, which is a derived median plane and the derived median plane must be between two parallel planes spaced apart five thousandths. And so we can see the difference interpretation between a flatness applied to a surface, which just happens to be part of a feature of size, versus directly applying flatness to a feature of size. In the scenario on the right, rule number one is being overridden. In fact, we're controlling the derived median plane flatness to a much tighter value than what would be allowed if we just relied on rule number one. We can see that the local measurements still have to be between 0 0.980 and 1.020, but we can have all sorts of flatness up to 5 thousandths according to the derived median plane flatness. With this setup, we can see that every local size measurement could measure at 1.020 and still have a form error down the middle or a bow of 5 thousandths. This would result in a max envelope of 1.025. Thus, we've negated the effects of rule number one. But our form is being controlled by the derived median plane flatness of 5 thou. However, this isn't always an applicable thing for most designers because as you can see in this scenario here, we can have a lot of flatness error on the top and bottom surfaces. In fact, if we see the left and right sides of this washer measure at 1.02 and then the center measures at 0.980, and the air is symmetric about the center of this part, we would report zero derived median plane flatness, but the top and bottom surfaces would each have a maximum of 20 thousandths flatness total between the two of them. And so this is not always an applicable method to define flatness for a feature of size. However, we are negating rule number one. Now the question stated that the standard says with flatness of a surface where the considered surface is associated with the size dimension, the flatness tolerance must be less than the size tolerance. And that's absolutely true. If you look at our example here, our flatness of 5 thousandths is less than that of the size tolerance of 40 thousandths. And our 40 thousandths size tolerance is derived from the MMC envelope of 1.020 and the smallest local size allowed of 0.980. And if we consider raising that flatness tolerance beyond 5 thousandths and beyond the 40 thousandths of size tolerance, perhaps to something like 50 thousandths, 
we see that we would never get beyond the tolerance of 40 thousandths of flatness because the difference between 0 0.980 and 1.020, which is this value here, is 40 thousandths. And so we'll never be able to deviate beyond 40 thousandths because that would inherently make us push this 0 0.980 beyond the LMC limit to something like 0 0.970 or smaller. And so we would begin to fail the size tolerance before we'd ever be able to utilize the entire flatness tolerance. So for that reason, the statement in the standard stands that we have to have a flatness tolerance that is less than our size tolerance when flatness is applied to a surface. So hopefully that helps clarify some things for this question and opens our eyes to the idea of DMP flatness or derived median plane flatness and how flatness applied to a surface affects a feature of size. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by training experts.